sounding good, palm friends. Hey, Louis. Just wanted to stop by and let you guys know you've been invited to the Guy White Festival. For real? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> to some bands, a practice space is just that, a practice space. But to others, it's a home away from home. There's so many bands that practice here at City Sound that it blows my mind sometimes. There's parties here, people have sex here, there's drugs, and there's music. It's the city of sound. This is a Deadbeat Brass practice space. This is a Wolf Fucks practice space. Over here is a Little Dipper and the Snacks. Uh, then we got a Penis Tranquilizer over here. Crystals over here. Board Crystal! Met you at the bar with your hands in your pockets, and I was tied up inside. Met you at the park and the belt that you. Great take, Hi, Andrew. Dude. Great take. Nice man. practice, man. I mean. Yeah, that was tight, man. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. That was really sick. Oh, Lewis, man, it's been a minute. What you doing here, bud? Oh, you know, just letting you know you've been asked to perform in the Guy White Festival. I'm not really sure. Hey, sorry about that. What do you want? What was going on in there? Just a little side project. Don't worry about it. Oh, I just uh, want to let you know you've been invited to the Guy White Festival this year. Oh, okay. That's cool, I guess. Okay. I gotta go do some stuff, so. See ya. Yeah, I don't know. I met a uh, guy in early 2001. Um, I was still a pretty young DJ at the time, doing a story on his uh, his really cool basement setting he had for this whole home studio uh, thing he had going on. It really helped his sound, but um, you know, he was really just riding this huge wave that he had made in the 80s with the doormats and hunker dump, and uh, he was really just he was a he was a force. He was really like I said, untouchable. Standard conventional wisdom for rock and roll was you make something really clear and crisp sounding so you know what you could hear, you know, you could hear everything that was going on, but, uh, you know, it just, it seemed like Guy just stopped and said, why? You know, why are we doing that? Why don't we just make something shitty? Why don't we just make it, like, hard to hear? So, yeah, usually um, with the mic, you know, it's just facing towards the amp in rock and roll. It's like what they did with uh, a lot of bands before, you know. What Guy White did, I mean, what really... He changed the whole industry. He just he just said, you know what? He just turned it he turned it the other way. And uh, that was pretty incredible. You know, fast forward to the nineties, I mean, a lot of bands were coming up on the exact same kind of uh, kind of thing, putting the mic the other way. I mean, you know, it was almost becoming an industry standard and he really wanted to do something different when he was with the Sweaty Nixons, so with those butter albums, I mean he just he wanted to get a nice a nicer sound and he he went back down to the mic and he just thought, hey, buddy, why don't we just uh, turn you right back on towards it? And honestly, blew the whole lid off. The whole rock and roll industry just blew everybody away. No one saw it coming. It's 
So yeah, it just kind of like goes like that for a while and switches off between this and that other part. Just kind of like chill thing I thought was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. What we could do, we should like put some like crazy like violin on it and then like layer some hardcore lyrics on it to contrast the chillness yeah. of the music. You know what I mean? Like, wait, do that thing again? Do it again? I smashed his Adam's apple with the Fuji apple, not the green apple. I smashed his Adam's apple! And then go like a little bit flat, but like they get it, you know what okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, flat. yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, it's just so cool to be part of a scene with such rich history. I, I like, I just love like the the Minneapolis like DIY underground scene. I mean, I, I saw my I saw my first show at the entry when I was like six, Kitten Forever. I took Tic Tacs and pretended I was tripping. And it was like really cute. Uh, my parents told me they were getting divorced at Wild World. Like we were all seeing a show and then they just like popped it, you know. And like it was actually super sad. But um, um, I lost my virginity at uh, Triple Rock. Front row, first row, I mean, amazing. Like, just so many good memories, and it's just so cool to be a part of it now, and everyone's super supportive, and, um, yeah, it's just a really good time. Uh, have you heard of that singer-songwriter, Gary? No. Uh, he's local, I guess. Sounds pretty cool. Cool. Yeah? Um, yeah, Shauna and Maddie and I, we met actually in the dorms freshman year. Um, got super close, we bonded over music and cheese platters, uh, I'm a cello variety pack kind of person, whereas Shauna and Maddie are more of like Kirkland cheese platter of the Target variety, so that's super fun. And then Tarek is from Jordan or something, and I don't think they eat cheese there. Yeah, my name is Tarek and I'm from Rochester. Dude, Guy White? Don't even get us started. I mean, like, everyone loves him. He's a legend. He, like, created the DNA of music that's, like, in our bodies. You know what I mean? Like, he took, like, an empty bounce house, blew it up, and, like, made the world full of music. I mean, he's legendary. Like, like yeah, man. I heard he smoked with Malcolm X. Oh, do you want to oh, yeah, well, me and the guys have been playing together for, like, about probably about a year now, I think. It's been pretty awesome. Uh, I just kind of saw him playing around town with their old bands and just kind of approached him after a show and just talked to him. We became, you know, really fast friends. Uh, got a network. All about the networking. Yeah, I was in this ska reggae band called White Dreads. Um, kind of like a mix between like 311 and Ziggy Marley. It's pretty chill. Yeah, I was in this band pronounced Blap. And, uh,. Derek just came up to me after a show and was telling me how good I was, so made me sign something and the rest is history. Yeah, same here. Kind of weird. Oh, man. When I first saw Andrew play with White Dreads, he was fucking killing it on the bass. He was doing these crazy, like, tritonals, and he's just, like, really, really good singer, man. Like, he can really belt it out, you know? He just has a great style, looks hot, it's awesome. Um, and Andy, he's just a master on the guitar, like... Blap, all their songs were like 15 minutes, but he always found a way to keep it interesting, you know? Just kind of cruising those scales. Mixolydian, Goo-Lydian, uh, Swiss-Lydian, all that kind of shit. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we all come from pretty diverse musical backgrounds, so I like to give them these little vitamins before each practice, and uh, yeah, they're pretty receptive to my vision after that. <laughs> yeah, the vitamins are definitely Valium. Yeah, definitely. It's awesome. Well, yeah, I joined this band a couple months ago, and uh, I just saw Derek's Facebook status asking for a black musician for pay. And I know it's kind of racist, because I am the token black guy, but he pays us with Valium, so that's all right. Yeah, Alex joined pretty recently. Um, I just thought it would be a good idea to like bring some diversity to the scene, you know, get a little different perspective. Because, uh, you know, mainly we're just white. Uh, and yeah, it's been, like, totally awesome. Like, People have been responding really well, and we've been, like, getting a lot more shows, and, like, oh, it's just been great. Um, I don't think he knows how to play an instrument, though, so we just kind of had to put him on tambourine or kind of auxiliary percussion, things like that. It's been working out great. He's awesome. Actually, I play trumpet, and it's in a jazz sextet, so, I mean, we play jazz, and I don't really think these guys know what that is, so, yeah. Oh, the guy's, like, a legend, man. Like, he basically built this scene single-handedly. It's, like... It's like a really dream come true to be playing the show. Uh, 
ever since I moved here from Woodbury a couple years ago, I've been like totally obsessed with all his like stuff that he made, like back in the '80s and stuff. I think the doormats are my favorite. I got a tattoo of their uh, lead singer Lance on my thigh. It's pretty sweet. Bullets. Yo, where did those CDs go? What? You guys know where those CDs went? CDs? Yeah, we brought them to the turf club. The turf? Oh. Um, so yeah, I recorded this album called The Ketchup Sessions, and uh, people really friggin' dug it, man. So uh, we just kept going, kept going with it, and uh, I guess now we're playing the show now. I don't know. So yeah, man, I was just chilling one day. I was just slap, slap up in my base, and I was just hanging out. It was really cool. I was eating hottie dog with a lot of ketchup. Took a wicked bite, man. Ketchup, ketchup just had to get all my fretboard here, and I just loved the tone. So uh, yeah, man, that's just uh, how it went. Check this shit out. I try to look and perform in a way that my sexual energy escapes me from every breath to every fingernail. And I want that audience to be deeply, deeply affected by it. So yeah, so when I'm performing my moves on stage, like I really see the reaction in the audience. Like I can see them back away because I'm literally almost hitting them in the face. It's really, you can tell they love it, just the way they're looking fear. You know, I get the spirit of the fight in me. Like, I've seen Rocky, like, twice, and... Well, this is all my stuff. Um, I like to do kind of some different shit. I like to, like to keep things big and cluttered, just messy, and kind of just, like... Like, just something like that. Just keeps kind of what we do what it is. Back here we have an assortment of drums that I have stacked to get the sound of not one, but all of them. Still not kind of where I want it to be, but we're we're getting there. This is well, this is mainly just a snack, but also now that we're here, test this out. Like, you hear that? All right, well yeah. So got a lot of crazy sounds in our band, so I gotta have a lot of these suckers. I'm gonna point out a few of my favorites for you. This one's the, called the Fuck You. It's a pretty intense fuzz pedal. I like, kind of kind of a staple of our sound, you know. Mm, this one's called the Laughing Lady, actually. And it's a, um, it just creates like female laughing sounds. Not very practical, but we practically use it on every song, so. The Barbecue Sundress. The Mississippi Skinny Critter. This one's the Sleazy Dolores. The Lasagna. This is the So, uh, what do you guys know about Guy White? You follow his stuff, follow his career? I don't know Guy White is. Oh, Guy? Pete? You mean Pete? I don't know if he means Pete. Who's Guy White? I didn't, I didn't touch him. So we're going to check out the venue that we're going to do for the showcase. It's called Weed Smell. It's like a DIY space. We used it last week for one of our bands and it turned out pretty good. And Oh, fuck. Again? I got to make some phone calls. Yeah. It's a Whole Foods. I know, it's the third one this month. Uh, we could try that basement space. So yeah, these are the uh, t-shirts I designed uh, to give out at the showcase uh, tomorrow. And yeah, I think they're pretty freaking sweet. I think people are really gonna dig them. I'm excited to see like people wearing them around town and stuff, cause you know, having like your own merch is really important for you know a local scene like this. And like, we're all kind of really supportive of each other, I think like, most of the shirts that I have are just other bands' t-shirts, you know, so. I got this local guy who kind of makes, like, everyone else's t-shirts um, to do it. He has, like, a screen printer in his basement. Uh, it's pretty hard to get a hold of him, but I think he's just a busy guy. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be really cool. I think it'll turn out great. So, Shauna's amp broke at our last show. Um, so we are headed right now to pick up a new one from this guy on Craigslist who said he'd give us one. Um, and apparently he has a lot of music gear, which is really cool. Uh, and all we had to do is like give him a picture of our feet for it. Show him the, show him the picture. <laughs> Gross. Hey, Craigslist user, uh, Foot Liquor Ampersand, are you here? I'm here. 
those ladies who emailed me about the amp? Yeah. We still got a deal? Oh, yeah, we do. Let me go get it for you. Here we are. It's a 1961 Dutch Challenger. Ringo used this exact amp, you know. Three inputs, nine outputs, reverb delay. You're gonna have to wind it up after every use, but if Ringo got used to it, you can get used to it. Cool, right on, man. So, uh, I also got some other goodies in the back if you're interested. Some golf clubs, some genuine seal meat. Don't ask me how I got that, though. Uh, no, we're good with the amp. Here's the picture of our feet. How'd you brought that up? Wait, 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 you got any others? I knew you guys pulled out on me. All right, this'll do. Good? I think we're good. So, uh, wait, wait, wait. You guys in like a punk band or something? Technically, we're late era riot girl, early era dub. All right on. I used to be in a band too, you know. Bitch father, we were called. We were touring the world. Ate acid every day. Reminds me of a story. See, we were in Tennessee. Now, quarter of bumfuck, you got a purty mouth. Now, I don't know. So, uh, he's driving in this little uh, shingdig tonight, huh? Who's it gonna be? I think it's your turn. Yep. We Me? Talked, we talked about this earlier, yep. My turn? It can't be my turn, man. I just drove, like, what, last week or like, something? No. I feel like you should, you should just drive. Dude, it's not my it's not my turn to drive, and I've been drinking a little bit, a little buzzed, and uh, just dude, what the fuck? Not it's really, dude. Fuck happens. you, dude. What you do you mean? What the fuck? Not, no, I always fucking fuck? drive, dude. You drive. Fuck no. you, fucking asshole. I'm buzzed. I'm buzzed, and I'm not driving. I'm buzzed. Uh, I'm driving. Can you get a ride? How we all doing? Woo! Fresh off the release of the Ketchup Sessions, my best friend's Smudge Club. <laughs> best shows like I can't even describe in words like 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 no one puked even no one not in the front row not in the back row the band was vibing and I I looked over at Sean at one point and she looked back it, it was crazy it was like one of those moments like where like we get it and the audience got it and it just was so powerful and like did you see that one guy over there do you see him 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, it just was really, like, one of our most powerful shows, I think, and, and I was on the ground, and, like, I've had back problems in the past, but, like, it didn't add up today, and, like, as a kid, like, I had, like, a, one of those really, like, scoliosis backs, and, like, and it didn't even, like, hurt me. This is Mike. I sang into it, so it's, like, it's, like, really just kind of, like, DIY here, and I, I love that, kind of, like, about the whole thing, and, and I hope Guy liked it, too. I, I, yeah. Oh, man. I'm just, like, exhilarated right now. That was so fun. Uh, I just really love playing these like house shows like the energy is just so intense and like the crowds right up next to you and like you really get into it like who says you need a PA to sound good you know man it's awesome I think guys really gonna dig us I think we definitely got this one in the bag you know it's just awesome to be a part of this uh, do-it-yourself culture you know like it's just really fun um, hey guys look, can you hurry up and get my amp out of here please like, we... I got, got somewhere to go right. yeah Anyways, well, I'll catch you later. I'll see you guys after we win. <laughs> okay, guess what? Don't guess, I'll tell you. We won! Ah, yes! We won! We won! We won! We won! We won! We won the whole thing! We won the prize money and we're gonna record an album with Guy White. And it's just like, it's so exciting. We won! We won. Um, okay, okay, um, I'm gonna go uh, meet right now with the band. We're gonna get them uh, going, and we're gonna go meet with Guylight right now. So, uh, we won. <laughs> Guy, we'll see you now. just like processing right now um it kind of sucked like he uh yeah it was a real bummer like he kind of just yelled at us his breath smelled really bad and he had like weird like piles of paper around his office and we were like oh cool like band like contract and he said you don't ever speak to me ever which is just like yeah fuck guy white i guess right you're asking me how i do it what kind of fucking question is that, jackass? Something sounds good because I make it sound good. It's me, all me. That's how it's been in this town since the beginning, and that's how it'll be till the end, god damn it. It's a doggy dog world out there, you know. Fucking people here think it's some all friendly utopia. Oh, yeah, let's all get along, brothers, sisters. Nah, they'll stab you in the back. Just for a profit. I don't care who you are. Fuck! Nothing matters! They all just want to get to me. They all just want to be the next cool, hip thing. The next big thing. The next new sound. They don't actually care about the fucking music. Nobody cares about the music. Nobody! It's just me! It's only me! It's always been me! It always will be! I have the gift. If the golden gift, God is dead and there is only God right now, baby! We didn't win. We didn't win. But the band that did win didn't take it for some reason. So we were next in line and we got it. And I just came from meeting with Guy White and it was it was fucking incredible. He's such a nice guy. Like he's really passionate. He laid out this whole master plan for like what he wants from us and uh, he really wants to rework my image. So right now I'm going to Goodwill to buy like dirty clothes. He wants me to get rid of all my denim, which kind of you know, that was a blow, but you know, it's it's guy white, you know. Yeah, um the meeting did suck for sure, but 
I'm actually not really bummed, like me, myself, you know, because I realized that I already have all that I want in music, you know what I mean? Like, I get to play in a band with my best friends and goof around, just do what we want, play music. That's, that's all you really need, you know?